We've been working through this faithful series for a few weeks. We've talked about discipleship as adults, things we learn in small groups and all the ways that we learn and grow. We've talked about our children and the ways that they learn and grow and that we're helping them learn and grow. We've talked about our mission work and the ways that we go outside of this building on a regular basis in Westerville and throughout the world to help other folks learn and grow. We've talked about what we inherited from those who have gone before last week and thought about what we might leave for someone to inherit from us, not our personal belongings, but our, our legacy of faithfulness. Today we're talking about faithfulness in song. It occurred to me as I was thinking about this, what we should have done, could have done today, is had a hymn sing and just sung some songs together because it's more fun to sing together than it is not to. But I thought, well, you're, you're expecting me to say something. Maybe you're hoping it's very short. It probably will be. Jane said a lot. Thank you so much. Jane gets to sing with this crew and play with the bells and do the things, and we heard her story a little bit about how much that has meant and how it has changed you to sing with others. And I'm pretty sure we could ask everyone sitting in front of you and some people who are somewhere else today about that and hear something similar. I asked them to send me notes. Why do you sing? Some of you did. Some of you kept it to yourselves. Some of you forgot, didn't you? Yeah. I called you out. Sorry. Accountability is part of our life together. <laughs> So it's picking on each other. I'm, I'm glad that we like each other. I did get some notes, and I'm pretty sure if I'd gotten other notes, they'd have been similar, because the notes I got were very, not surprisingly, very much the same. We sing to praise God. We sing to connect with God. We sing to help others connect with God. Someone said, I found out during the pandemic that singing by myself is not the same. Singing with others fear, feels spiritual, somebody wrote. Combining voices, harmonizing, working together to create something beautiful. Working together to create something beautiful. The choir did that this morning, did you notice? Did you notice who the most important person in the choir was? Did you? I hope you're saying no. Because there isn't, you're supposed to say no. Just say, did you notice who the most important person in the choir was? No. Because there isn't one. Sometimes the tenors have to be reminded. <laughs> right? Tenors are just like trumpet players, Larry. We know that everyone else is following us. There's no most important person in a choir because it's about singing together. Friday, I have the luxury in my life when I get to preach of meddling with an idea all week long and saying that it's work. <laughs> it's a lovely process. Friday, I was working. Don't, please don't understand that I started on Friday. But Friday, I was working with this. And I was sitting in my office, and I heard a sound. Oh, what's that sound? So I got out of my chair and out of my office and I came to the sanctuary to find out what the sound was. And the sound was Tony Haygood playing the piano and a young lady playing the cello and 25 or 30 Otterbein students singing some songs by some composer. And there were a few people in the audience. I recognized a couple of folks from our church who were sitting in that audience. Some of us were there to hear and support those kids and their singing. Kids, they're young men and women, and they're kids. And there was no most important person in their choir either. I stood in the back for a little while and just listened to the harmonies they were making, to those voices that those kids have been training accidentally and then on purpose since they were very small until they were accepted in music school, many of them. Although there was one young man who introduced himself as a major in biology. 
And he said, well, I don't know why I'm here, because everyone else was a major in music, performing arts, and stuff like that. And some of the chords that they sang in their four part plus harm, there are four different parts in a normal choir, sopranos and altos and tenors and basses. And some of their chords had, you could hear the four parts blending together. And some of the chords were those really good chords where there's like 19 parts all doing a thing in the chord. Oh. And one of the best parts of listening to those kids was watching their faces when they hit one of those 19-part chords. And you could see it on their face. It's better, it's better than a cream-filled donut. <laughs> and you could see them because they knew they'd hit it. Oh, can you hear it? Can you feel it? As if you'd sung it. Oh, boom. There it happened. You know, you can't sing harmony by yourself. Have you ever tried? Can you hum one note and sing another? If you're a trumpet player, you can hum one note and play a different note. And it sounds really weird. It takes two to sing harmony. That's what Paul's writing to Ephesus about. Don't be foolish, be wise, he says. Make the most of the time. Sometimes that's translated, redeem the time. If we went and played with the original language, it might mean to purchase or to buy back. As if we had to purchase the time. We notice the time flies. We notice that there's not enough time. We notice if I just had one more day in the week, you just fill it up with stuff, so it didn't matter. Buy back the time. Reclaim it, Paul says. For the days are evil. He acknowledges there's stuff happening that we would prefer was different, that we feel like should be, should, as a hard word, should be different because we have some expectation, some ideal, some thought that this is how it's supposed to be. And instead, when I look around, it's like this over here. Ugh, the days are evil. Now, one of our challenges, and the reason I'm not making a list of how the days are evil today is because I don't feel like picking a fight. Katie told me not to. She didn't want the emails. If I made a list of how the days are evil, it might look the same as yours, and it might look different. Nevertheless, there are challenges. Some of them are political. Some of them are systemic. Some of them are so social things that feel like they're evil. Some of them are things we deal with in our own personal lives that are ways that things are not the way they're supposed to be. It might be our health, it might be our job, it might be any list of a number of things. The days are evil, Paul acknowledges. And in that short statement, it contains so much about what's not the way it's supposed to be about our lives. Reclaim the time, Paul says. See, we could just lament. In a few minutes, we're going to sing a song that talks about Earth's lamentations. There are things we go through. The days are evil. We could stay there and just make our laundry list of complaints. Have you ever done that? Fess up. We all have. Paul says, instead, give thanks in all things. I am not thankful for not having a donut right now. Do you know I was wiping my chin while you talked about the donuts and the cream filling? Oh, there are snacks later. I don't know if there are donuts or not. We could stay stuck in our lament. Or we could listen to what Paul has to say. He says, don't get drunk with wine. 
And it can be understood as some prohibition kind of thing. Maybe it is. Or maybe we could understand it as one way that we sometimes, in an unhealthy way, escape from what's hard in life is to run away. Drinking is one way to do that. There's a bazillion other ways. Binging Netflix is a way to run away. Sorry. Instead of running away, be filled with the Spirit of God and reclaim the time. Sing a spiritual song. Sing hymns. Sing psalms. But notice, when he says to do this, he doesn't say, sit in your room by yourself and sing a song. Just like one of our choir members mentioned, singing by yourself is not the same. He says, sing these songs and psalms and spiritual hymns among yourselves. It's plural. Do it together. So when you get with your group of friends later to go down to Wits or Graders or the old bag, wherever you're going for lunch, the donut shop, if they've got any left. I don't even know if they're open on Sunday down there. If they're not, Marla, oh, thanks. Save me a trip. Maybe you should skip down the, the, the sidewalk and sing together, right? We're going for donuts. Victory in Jesus. There's donuts down. No. It doesn't have to be literal. It can be, but it doesn't have to be literal singing. It's that we do our lives together. The African concept is Ubuntu. Sometimes translated, I am because we are. Bishop Desmond Tutu says, my humanity is caught up. It's inextricably bound with yours. We're in it together. It's not, I think, therefore I am, he says. It's, I am human because I participate. Mother Teresa says we need to remember that we belong to one another. When, we do, when we're doing that, we're singing. There's a kind of harmony that happens when we combine the melodies of our lives. I want to invite you to sing with me 